Hey, what's going on guys? Today I've got the Sigma 85mm 1.4 EX DG HSM Element OP lens here that I want to review for you. Look at that. That is a seriously big piece of glass. Now, if you've read any of the reviews on this lens or you've watched any other YouTube reviews of this video, you know that it's awesome and I'm not going to disagree with that. This lens is awesome. You should buy it. Thanks for watching. That's the end of the review. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but in short, yes, this lens is amazing. It's one of those kinds of lenses that once you put it on your camera, you kind of just don't want to take it off. You want to use it for everything. and. That's pretty much what I found I wanted to do once I put it on my camera. I started shooting it even when I kind of didn't really need this focal length or the super shallow depth of field just because it's really cool. Now, even though this lens is totally awesome, I would not recommend this lens for everybody. And I'll get to who I wouldn't recommend it to and why in just a minute. But you take a look at this lens, it is a sexy lens. You throw the lens hood on it, make it look a little bit bigger, and it looks even cooler. But it, it's just awesome. The lens is very sharp, even wide open. It, it, the autofocus is very fast and very accurate. And of course, you get that super shallow depth of field that comes with a 1.4 aperture. Now, having said that, this lens can be very frustrating to use and it's not so much the lens's fault as it is a photographer's fault. When you're shooting at a 1.4 aperture it is very easy to miss your focus point and end up with shots that are just slightly out of focus and I found myself doing that more often than I would like to admit. Now my shooting technique is as a focus and recompose shooter. I'm kind of lazy I guess you could say and I don't like moving my focus point around a lot from the back of the camera. I just use my center point, focus, lock the focus and recompose. That is very difficult to do when you're shooting at 1.4. If my hand were your subject's eye that you're focusing on and you got the focus here, well then when you go to center your shot or off center your shot or whatever you're doing and you move the lens, just that little slight shift can change your focus plane. And when I first started using this lens, I ran into a lot of problems where the tips of the nose were uh, in focus, but the eyes were just a little bit soft. And at first, of course, I said, oh, it's a problem with the lens. It's, it's uh, back focusing or front focusing, whatever it is. And uh, you know, I quickly realized it wasn't a lens problem, it was a photographer problem. And so, because it is a little bit challenging to shoot with, I would not recommend this lens for a beginner. I think that this is a more advanced lens for at least an intermediate um, photographer. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but before I was a photographer, I spent 14 years as a deputy sheriff. And one of the things that we did, we did a lot of firearms training, especially when it came to our rifle shooting. And there's a lot of breathing techniques and a lot of various things that you do for stability when you shoot for accuracy. And photography is the same. You've got to have a stable base when you shoot. And when you're shooting with either very slow shutter speeds or very shallow depths of field, you've really got to focus on your stance and your breathing. And I'll be honest with you, I have a very sloppy shooting style. I don't shoot a lot with slow shutter speeds, and but I do shoot with the shallow depth of field. And if you, when you think about it, even taking a deep breath, your body moves. And so you really have to focus on your breathing because just that little movement from breathing or rocking or anything like that, it can change your focus point and it's very easy to miss. So you want to make sure you've got a good shooting base whenever you're shooting with something like this and you're just really focused on what you're doing. But when you nail a shot with this lens, it comes out beautiful. This lens is, like I said, it's incredibly sharp, wide open, and you can just really separate your subject from the background and just get some really creamy backgrounds. One of the things that I love about this lens so much is you're just able to really knock distractions out of focus. You can take a look at these pictures of this baby here. These pictures, it's not from a photo shoot. I was at a swim meet. I was shooting with a Sigma 120 to 300 and I was having fun with this little girl. We were playing around. She was being adorable and I shot some pictures of her, but it, the pictures were just very distracting because the background is very, there was a lot of people sitting there. There were soda cups and Gatorade bottles and all kinds of stuff. And so I threw on the Sigma 8514 and I started shooting away and I could just pretty much knock everything out of focus. And I got some really cute pictures of this little girl in an environment that 
was incredibly cluttered. Uh, over the weekend, I shot a wedding. I am not a wedding photographer. I don't like shooting shooting weddings. And so as a result, I usually turn them down, but it was a neighbor who was having a very small, very low budget wedding. And they were having their ceremony and the reception in the backyard. And they kept asking me, kept asking me if I would come. They basically just wanted snapshots more than anything. And so I finally gave in and I decided to do it. But I got there and the venue was incredibly cramped and there were some very unflattering objects in the background that were very distracting and they would have killed the shots and with this lens I was just able to knock it out of focus to where you can't even tell that there were you know regular household items like there was a green waste can in the backyard and that's just not something you really want in the background of a wedding photograph but with this, I was just able to knock it out of focus. It's just an amazing lens. Obviously, this lens is mostly suited towards portrait photographers, and it does a phenomenal job at that. But one of the other things that I like about this is I also like it for shooting sports, especially indoor sports, where you don't need a super long reach, something like volleyball, basketball, wrestling, where you don't need that really long telephoto reach, but you want that 1.4 aperture to let in a lot of light and be able to keep your ISOs down and your shutter speed high. Because this thing does autofocus so fast, it does a really good job in photographing those types of sports. I actually think that it performs better than the Canon 1.2 in shooting sports situations because the Canon 1.2 is a little bit slow on the autofocus side. But this delivers with a very fast autofocus. The only complaint that I have about this lens, and I looked around online and I couldn't find anybody else who ran into this situation, and so I don't know if it was an isolated issue, but I did have some problems focusing in low light situations. Now, I shoot with a Sigma 70 to 200, a Sigma 120 to 300, so I'm pretty familiar with Sigma products and their capabilities, and you know, I'm pretty comfortable being able to judge when, a, when my Sigma lenses would be able to autofocus or not autofocus. But I found a situation whenever I was shooting the wedding reception with this as it began to get dark before they kicked the outside lights on, this lens was really struggling to autofocus. Now, like I said, I haven't found anybody else who has that complaint, but I felt like if I had been shooting with one of my other lenses, I would have been able to still achieve autofocus in the lighting situations. Now, I'm not saying that it didn't autofocus, it just had to hunt back and forth before it would lock on. Maybe it was just an isolated situation. Maybe it was darker than what I actually thought it was. I thought that there was enough light for autofocus. And actually, as a matter of fact, I ended up switching to a Canon 24 to 105 when this, when I began having problems with this, and the Canon 24 to 105 autofocused every time without a problem. So I don't know if it's a lens issue. I, I really have no explanation for you. Just something that I ran into. But like I said, I haven't heard anybody else have that complaint. All in all, I absolutely love this lens. I highly recommend it for anybody, especially for those of you who are portrait photographers, but also for those of you who want to shoot indoor sports. I think that this lens should be at the top of your wish, wish list. Hopefully that answers some questions for you guys. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching.